Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Buzzworthy Chit Chat. I am your host, Lexi Mahari, and in this episode, we are going to talk about the Super Bowl halftime that took place last night on February 13th. Hey, I want to know what you think, but before we dive into it, I'm going to just ask you to take a moment to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so that you can be notified each time I upload a brand new video. So folks, we have to talk about the much anticipated Super Bowl halftime show that took place last night featuring Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, 50 Cent, Mary J. Blige, Kendrick Lamar, and of course Eminem. So let me tell you, I was excited to see this show as someone who, you know, obviously was around at the time. This music was just hitting and it still hits for me. It takes me back to a wonderful time in my life. Um, I was really excited to see these performers come together on this stage to perform, you know, a bit of it, it was as I'm kind of hinting at very nostalgic for so many reasons kind of reminded you though of all the people that we have lost unfortunately since that time but we'll get to that in just a moment so the Super Bowl show kicked off last night with the next episode in which Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg kick things off it was a very high energy performance you know hey Dr. Dre looked good considering you know we all know that he suffered a stroke a while back and so I know for me I was curious to see you know how much of him was back and he seemed to you know handle it well you know all things considered and so as I said they gave a very good high energy performance it was really loud in the beginning like I, I thought wow I don't know how they can even hear themselves performing you know if let's say if they had a live mic I'm telling myself these were live performances so honestly I you know wondered how they could even hear themselves with the noise level that was off you know going off at the beginning of the performance and so for me they did not disappoint on the opening number Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre then followed up the next episode with California Love. And you know they had to perform California Love, given that the Super Bowl was happening on the West Coast in California with these California artists. So the crowd went wild. And again, this is that moment where you're like, man, you miss Tupac, right? Snoop Dogg did good. He, you know, filled in as he needed to fill in with Dr. Dre. But, you know, you just couldn't help but think of Pac in that moment. I think there were thoughts that, you know, they might hologram Pac in, but I just couldn't see Snoop Dogg or Dr. Dre doing that to, you know, Tupac's memory. So again, I thought they handled that well. And we'll talk more about why I think they handled it well in just a moment. So one thing I want to say about this show is I appreciated the musical flow. There was excellent flow to the music. And from California Love, we had 50 Cent in the club. Now, you know, once again, here is another song. All the songs that were performed tonight were, with the exception of Kendrick Lamar, were like 20 years old. But that's neither here nor there. Or you might as well say pretty close to 20 years old. I think In The Club came out in 2003. So, you know, plus or minus a year. We're talking about songs that are over 20 years old. And thus, these people were 20 years younger at the time when their songs came out. And so, you know, if you're looking at this, uh, watching this video, then you are seeing seeing a screenshot of 50 Cent hanging upside down because as you know in his video he was hanging upside down and so all I could think was a please don't fall b man that's got to be hard to breathe because if you are of a particular age you know that no matter how fit you are everything is just a little bit harder as you get older so there were moments about or there were there's something about watching this part for me was comical but at the same time you know go 50 cent 50 cent definitely needed to be on the stage because to me I felt like the majority of the acts are obviously representative of Dr. Dre's productions so you know songs that he had produced and therefore of course you had to have 50 cent come out and what better way for him to come out than hang it upside down that gold chain was a bit much for me it was like dude you didn't need that but you know I guess what would he have been without it so uh, you know hats off to 50 cent for coming out there and hanging upside down 
But uh, yeah, he gave a great performance, I thought. You know, he had the girl dancers and all that stuff. They had the club feel. And um, I thought it was a, a, another good part of the show. So let's talk about the next performance that then followed 50 Cent. I, I really appreciated the way 50 Cent uh, ended his performance. You know, whoever directed that show, that was really cool because, you know, he and the dancers bring his part of the show to an end and they look up, the camera pans up and all hail Queen of hip hop and R&B Mary J Blige in her silver outfit, the platinum hair. She is glowing and she gives us that Dr. Dre production family affair. Another song that's over 20 years old yet you never get tired of hearing it. And she performed the heck out of that song and she followed it up with No More Drama. Now, I must say I was a little confused by why No More Drama was included, because, you know, if you're a music nerd like me, then you know that that song was produced by Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. But then, you know, when Kendrick Lamar followed up in the next performance, I, again, I thought, you know, hey, this is a good musical flow. And so we move on to Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar gave me what I needed, right? You can never get tired of hearing all right, because it seems that for whatever reason, in a social justice way, we are always struggling with something, right? And if you've been watching the news lately, it's just ongoing. It's still going. And so when you hear this anthem by Kendrick Lamar, all right, you can't help but to just wrap yourself in this song and try to envision a world in which we don't have to deal with this nonsense someday. And so I have to say that... Um, I thought he did a great job performing. You know, Kendrick Lamar's performances never disappoint. I am still seeing the images of him and Beyonce performing. I think it was at the was at the BET Awards when they just like brought the house down a few years ago. Um, you know, he's he's just the ultimate performer. He's a talented hip hop artist. And so, you know, I thought he did an excellent job as well. And then his his show in and of itself with the blonde haired guys and the the marching and oh man it was just uh, I think very symbolic right symbolic of everything that's going on but the blonde hair of course giving us that transition over to who but Eminem yet again another very smooth transition the flow which I didn't realize how much and I know some of you may not like what I'm about to say but I did not realize how much Kendrick Lamar's flow in that song really does kind of match Eminem's flow to some extent. So I thought that was like a really good transition, the flow into Everybody Forgot About Dre. And of course, giving way to Lose Yourself, which is more of like an anthem type of, uh, you know, rap song that, you know, most, I think, sporting events, uh, athletes really say have said in the past that they hype themselves up to this song. So again, another, I thought a fitting song for the event itself. And, you know, it was good to see Eminem after all these years. I know he's been out and about, you know, um, but it had been a while since I've seen him. So I thought, you know, hey, good for Eminem. Eminem looks good. He did his part. He had the energy that he needed to have for that song. And then he took the knee, you know, and that knee could be interpreted in a, a variety of ways. You know, I don't know if his taking the knee was at all an, as an ode to Colin Kaepernick or if he was taking a knee because from his performance, we transitioned into that brief uh, tribute or ode to Tupac when, um, you know, Dr. Dre sat down at the piano and played a piece of I Ain't Mad At Ya from Tupac. Tupac. So, you know, I thought, uh, you know, that was like a, a really smooth transition, uh, acknowledgement of Tupac, because again, you couldn't watch them and not think about Tupac, honestly. I couldn't anyway. So, um, you know, that was cool to see. You know, then we had another performance by Dre and Snoop Dogg kind of tidying it up. They closed the show with Still Dre. And then, of course, we saw all of the acts return to the stage, so to speak. So, you know, all in all, I thought it was a great Super Bowl performance. You know, um, you know, again, we had folks taking knees. I, I don't think I mentioned Kendrick Lamar also had a, taken a knee at the beginning of his performance, I believe. And um, there were some little Easter eggs in there that I caught I didn't get to mention early on. I don't know if you all noticed it, though, um, earlier in the performance with Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre. When Snoop came down a level, um, there was actually a picture there of his him and his mom. I thought that was a, a cool tribute to her. Um 
you know, but yeah, lots, lots of little Easter eggs in there. I don't know how many folks were picking up on some of those things as well, but, um, you know, overall, a great Super Bowl performance. I have heard folks say it was the best Super Bowl performance ever. I'm not going to go that far and say it was the best performance ever. It's just it was the best one that we've seen in a while. That's maybe how I'm feeling about it. But you guys let me know what you think down in the comments. Was it the best Super Bowl ever for you? Um, you know, would love to hear from you. I'm I Personally, for me, if I had to choose, I would even still say it was the best ever, right? Because sometimes it's timing, right? That can make something come across or feel like the best ever. Like I still remember when Michael Jackson performed at the Super Bowl. And, you know, if you watch it now, maybe it wasn't, it's not so exciting for folks who, you know, weren't around then. But back in the day, that Michael Jackson performance at the Super Bowl halftime was everything. Um, you know, Beyonce's performance was really good. You know, um, there's been all kinds of uh, group um, performances like the ones we've seen tonight that, I, you know, I think for their time were probably really good. So um, I don't know. Maybe it was the best one ever. I'd love to hear from you. I might feel different in a few days, but um, I'm not going to quite give it the best ever, but I'm going to say it's the best one we've seen in a few years. Uh, so yeah, let me know your thoughts. I am going to shut up now. If you liked this video, please like it. Uh, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and I'll catch you in the next video.